Bob, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to talk to you about not just fixing your finances or improving your finances, but really uh, diving deep about changing habits and really transforming your life and, and the finances that follow. So thank you for joining me. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. And I, I love chatting about this stuff. So that should be fun. This should be. And guys, if you haven't met Bob, he is the creator of Seed Time, a personal finance site. You also have your YouTube channel. I was noticing you take Bible principles and you break it down and show how practical they can be with tackling a lot of big money problems that families and couples have to deal with, like paying down debt, saving, um, and investing wisely. So I kind of want to pick your brain on this because you have yeah. not always been the financial expert that I know. <laughs> and <there's> the, <laughs> Definitely you <know>. not. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've all been in a journey and we're all, you know, as yeah. we're going through the financial fallout of this virus, um, many families have found themselves at very different points, depending on where they are financially. So I kind of wanted to talk to you about a pivot point in your life. I remember reading on your site, there was a time in your 20s when things weren't looking so good. Um, No savings, checking account, kind of reminded me back in (laughs) my 20s, just wasn't that, it wasn't going well. But you were picking up some friends and your car broke down. Can you just kind of tell me what was going on then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this was kind of my financial turning point because uh, prior to this, like, uh, and I, I don't remember the exact stat, but it's something like 80, 85% of P- Americans, if you ask them, <laughs> are you good at, with money? <laughs> 80, 85% of them say, yes, I'm good with money. You know, but if you look at the evidence, uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely not the case. So a lot of us tend to think and believe that we are better with our money than we actually are. And we don't mm-hmm. know what we don't know. And so as a young 20 something, a little bit too cocky, arrogant, whatever, conceited, like I thought I was good at managing money. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, you know, already worked at a bank. Like, of course, I know how to handle money. Like I know what I'm doing. And, but the evidence began to arise mm-hmm. as I wasn't able to, you know, pay bills on time and getting calls from bills collectors or whatever. It's like, all right, maybe I don't know exactly what I need. And for me, this kind of turning point, I was in kind of like a sabbatical period living mm-hmm. in a town that I didn't know down in Florida, just kind of taking a year off college to kind of uh, clear my head and kind of get refocused in life and where I wanted to go and all that. Mm-hmm. So I'm down in Florida in this little town. And like you said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to this situation where money is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. I only have one credit card, which is kind of my saving grace because yeah. I thought you could only have one credit card at that time. And that that was really, really good because otherwise I would probably attend. But, uh, but anyway, so my credit card is nearly maxed out. And yes, I need to go pick up some friends from the airport. We were going to you know, hang out and all this stuff. My rent was due that day. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking my paycheck that I just got from my job. I needed to go deposit the bank so I can get it to pay rent because it's, they, they charge you like $50 extra if you're one day late, all this stuff. So all this stuff's running through my head. And then my car breaks down. And, um, and it's just like... Oh, the worst possible time, you know, and, um, and to add insult to injury, it was like right in front of this minor league ballpark. And so like an hour before game time. So all these cars are driving by and I'm thinking, this is going to be great. Like all these people here, somebody's going to see me and somebody help me. But it's like that thing where there's, when there's too many people, no one helps because everybody's waiting for somebody else to do it. Yeah. And so I'm literally standing there. Everybody's driving by staring at me. There was a police officer directing traffic and, and I'm like stuck in the middle of the road. And I asked him if he could help me like push off to the side of the road. And he's like, nope, I'm busy. <laughs> and so it was just one of those days where it's like everything starts piling up. So anyway, I end up like trying to push the car by myself, mm-hmm. you know, doing the holding the steering wheel and pushing it all, all the way to the side of the road, get it over the side of the road. I get in, close the door, put my hands in my head. And I'm, I'm just like, I have no idea what to do, you know? And I started praying and I'm like, God, what do I do? How do I get out of this situation? Cause I didn't know, like, I get no more money left in my checking. I didn't know mm-hmm. how I'm going to fix this car, let alone go pick up my friends, whatever, you know, not even thinking about the next couple of months, but 
but that was the moment where I realized, all right, God, I don't know everything I thought. Can you teach me something? You know, and like you mentioned, the Bible actually has a whole lot of practical wisdom for today about money. So that's been my fascination. Like, how do we pull some of that out? Some of these timeless truths mm-hmm. that we can use to impact our financial life, you know? So anyway, that was kind of how I got to that point and when everything kind of changed for me. Yeah. And I think you bring up several good points. Uh, you know, we've kind of all been there where it seems like everything crashes down at once and you got so many things happening. But you said, you know, you started making this commitment, of course, making a commitment, um, deciding that you want to change is a huge first step. But do you remember after you decided like enough is enough, I got to change yeah. this. What was the first thing you had to uh, pivot or adapt or change in your routine? Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, uh, yeah, I don't know the exact practical thing, but I know mm-hmm. what I immediately did was set out to learn, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I began reading at the time, it was a whole bunch of magazines. I would get Kiplinger's, the smart money magazine, just start reading all that. I found as many books as I could about money. Just, and as I began to read, it's like, wow, I really didn't know what I didn't know. And, yeah. um, and that in, immediately began bringing up some more practical things that I needed to do. So, you know, one of them just being, all right, debt isn't helping my cause. Like having this credit card full of, you know, thankfully again, it was only one, but having that balance, you know, basically maxed Mm -hmm. out is not helping my cause. Like I'm paying all these interest charges and all that's going on. So if I can get rid of that, that's going to be a big step forward. And then, you know, this car loan, what if I could get this car paid off and have an extra whatever, $250 a month to spend on whatever I want. Uh, and so just beginning to understand how much being out of debt would help was kind of my, you know, first thing that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I totally get that. Cause I was there, uh, my husband and I, our first conversation, we, we thought we we're being smart and we were, but you just weren't prepared was talking about money where we were at. And since we were both broke college kids, we thought, Oh, this would be simple. Yeah. Completely night and day how we viewed money. And it's fascinating. You mentioned like the credit card, same here. I had yeah. the car loan and thankfully it wasn't a lot of student loan, but still it was a student loan. So I had like these three debts on me. And I mean, it really does feel like a weight, yeah. but you got to a point and I, I kind of found this completely relatable where you said an early win you have was like, being able to pay your monthly expenses without having to rely on that credit card. Uh, Mm -hmm. For some people, you know, they're like, that's not a big deal. But for others, they're totally nodding their heads like, yes. Can you take me back? Like, how did you feel being able to do that to take care of your bills without having to rely on debt? Yeah, one of the things I talk about a lot is, um, you know, this whole idea that expenses rise to meet our income. And so, you get that big raise before you know it, it's gone. And like Mm -hmm. the the expenses, just always naturally just percolate up to wherever your income is. And so the thing that I'm always trying to um, help our people do is try to widen that gap as much as you can. Try to keep your expenses locked down while keeping your income going up and just creating a wider gap. And then you have a lot that you can do with that. And so for me, that was one of the things that uh, I had this revelation that, you know, as I am paying things, paying bills, and Mm -hmm. we're upside down, like we're going backwards. So not only are we just staying the same and not making financial progress, but we're literally going backwards. And that was a huge motivator for me to want to break out of that cycle. And how do we get to the point where we actually have a little bit of a gap there where we are earning, spending just a little Mm -hmm. bit less than we're earning. Um, Because just seeing that, just a tiny little thread of a gap there, at least we're moving forward. Something is building. But mm-hmm. that feeling of going backwards because I don't have enough to actually pay my bills. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really, really rough. And it's, yeah, it's just no fun at all. And that was something that for me, when I was in that phase, was a big motivator to get out of that as soon as possible. Yeah. And I think for couples and families that are having debt as a regular part of their budget, they can appreciate like, can you imagine if you take away the the car payment, if you didn't have yeah. the credit card minimum payment and, you know, the student loan, if you took that money and instead redirected it towards like your big family goals, what progress you can make on that. But I know this wasn't an overnight transformation no. <laughs> that it, it took steps. And you said learning, like that's absolutely key. But then there's a point when you have to apply you know, you can't just take in stuff, but you got to 
you know, yep. actually do it. So exactly. what was the hardest change you had to make? What was the easiest? Uh, well, I think, uh, I think one of the interesting things, cause this was, this was a couple years before I got married, mm-hmm. but bringing a spouse on board, you know, makes things interesting, you know? And so Linda, my awesome, wonderful, better half, uh, she is, she, I was a couple years ahead of her on this whole journey and mm-hmm. she was, you know, had a good amount of debt when we got married and I had already paid off a good amount. I still had a little bit left, but I was working towards it. And so she brought some in and she, um, you know, she'd been living at home up until mm-hmm. that point. And so she had an income, but really didn't have many expenses, but still was spending like crazy. And so was spending more than her income. So she was going backwards while living at home. So once we got married and we were kind of determined to pay off our debt, mm-hmm. uh, she had to make a massive lifestyle change. I mean, she went from spending about 120% of her income to down to probably 10% of her, of her income of her paycheck anyway. Mm-hmm. So it was just a massive change for her. in. Um, and for me as a husband who, you know, desired to give her the lifestyle that mm-hmm. I wanted her to have, um, it was painful for me. Honestly, that was mm-hmm. like one of the hardest things I think was saying, Hey, let's get married. Um, and I know we want to go on vacation and we want to do all this fun stuff, but instead, like, let's just not spend any money and like fast <laughs> every other meal and, you know, go to the gas station with like a four, $4 and <laughs> put that in the tank and all that stuff because we wanted to get out of debt, you know, mm-hmm. or I was really the one driving it, but she was interested. But, uh, but that was like hard for me because I, mm-hmm. I'm still, I haven't fully experienced the breakthrough of being out of debt and what this whole thing means. And I'm, trusting that mm-hmm. all the people like you and I who were talking about this then yeah um and who were saying it's worth it it's worth it go for it like I'm trusting that they're not lying to me and that it actually is worth it and that it is a goal that we can actually achieve and and I'm hoping that if mm-hmm. we just stick with this long enough that the that the tides are going to turn and that it is going to make life a lot better and a lot easier and uh and so it, it was just hard. It was hard yeah. hanging on to that because I'd never experienced this. And, and meanwhile, like I wanted to bless the socks off my new wife at mm-hmm. the time. Um, but instead, like I'm doing the opposite, you know, and that was really challenging for me personally. Um, in terms of the easier part, mm-hmm. uh, paying off the debt, I don't, I don't want to say it was easy, but for me, I'm somebody who really gets motivated by the trend and the direction with which mm-hmm. things are going. And so like we were just talking about being upside down, you're going backwards. If you have a little bit of a spread there, you're going forwards in your building. And for me, just seeing that first debt get paid off. And when we first paid off our first car loan, I just, man, I felt like I was, I could, I was so light. I could just yeah. run around the building. Like, I mean, walk, walking out of that bank, I was just, thrilled the feeling mm-hmm. of having that uh title in my hand and being like this is mine they cannot take it from me it just it felt amazing it was addictive and so that momentum and that uh fire that was kind of lit in me made it easier to fight through the challenges if that makes sense so it still wasn't easy but i think yeah. that made it considerably easier for me anyway yeah and i have a question because you brought up a couple good points and i've seen this you know every couple kind of handles their finances different, but I want to kind of go back to how you won Linda over with this new lifestyle, because I've seen some extremes. I've seen where, you know, the, the debt-free person, the person trying to get out of debt, they're almost like bulldozing their spouse over this. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen others where they kind of just address, I mean, they feel the same fear, like, Oh, I don't want to, you know, take them down this lifestyle. I want to provide for them, you know, in this relationship. So how did you have that discussion? Was it like a a series of discussions or how did you keep her motivated? Um, And then become really become a team, not just like she joined you, but you you felt Mm -hmm. like both of you were on the same page. Yeah, no. And that's great. That's a great question. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it was, it started with a pretty thorough sales pitch on my end (laughs) where, where, you know, really I'm painting a picture of where we can be, but Mm -hmm. in order to get there, like we got to go through this, we got to go through this valley in order to get there. Um, And she understood, uh, she got that, but I think for us, the thing that really lit a fire in her was 
we had always, even when we were dating, for some reason, mm-hmm. you know, it was just something that was had always been in our heart. Like we wanted to be really generous. It was just, mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, just a burning desire in our hearts. And we didn't have, you know, two nickels to rub together at the time. And so it was really painful whenever something would come up that we want to give to or an mm-hmm. organization or this charity or whatever that we want to support. It's like, all right, I think we can pull together like five bucks or something. Yeah. And, and we just wanted to be doing a hundred thousand times more than that, you know? Mm-hmm. And that was challenging for us. And once she began to see uh, that by having this debt paid off, that's going to mm-hmm. free up a lot more money to allow us to do that. And that really, it began to click for her a little bit more Yeah. at that point. Because, you know, we both desired to be a little more comfortable with our lifestyle, to be able to travel once in a while and whatever, to be able to go out to dinner and go to the movies and stuff like that. But that was the thing that really got her kind of lit on fire for it. And so my suggestion would be, and we talk about this a lot, Mm -hmm. uh, is that if you're trying to talk to that spouse and convince them is find out what they want, find out what their real motivators are in life. What are the things that they're really excited about paying off our debt, building a solid budget? Like this is the way that we're going to get there and we're going to reach those goals. Yeah. I love that. You're just painting a picture and really it's not forcing them. You're not tricking them or you're not being a parent. It's partnership. It's genuinely, how can we work together to create this life, you know, that we both want. So I I love that. But I know coming up with a plan is one thing, but keeping going forward, you know, your goals change and you evolve as a couple, you grow as a couple. How do you handle your finances now? I know we do kind of these monthly money dates now that we're home. They're a little more homebound, (laughs) but how do you check in with each other with finances? Well, yeah. I mean, and to your point, I'll add this Mm -hmm. to as well. Like one of the things that has been helpful over the years is just continuing to, um, continuing to talk And Mm -hmm. like, I've had to make some sacrifices. So in terms of, because this was initially my idea and I was the one originally pushing for it, like there were a good amount of sacrifices that I felt like I needed to make where it's like, this is not exactly how I would do it, but I need your buy-in. And so Mm -hmm. I'm going to sacrifice on this. So it's like, there's too much or more money than I would put in the budget for whatever, hair and makeup or whatever the thing may be. But I need you to be excited about this and interested in it. And so those are some of the sacrifices that need to be made there. Now, as far as that, how we're continuing um, Mm -hmm. and just kind of having those check-ins. Yeah, we, it's not on a calendar, Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it's probably about two times a month. We are just talking about where we are with the budget. Uh, You know, and honestly, we're talking about this on a smaller scale, probably every few days, just talking about, because the way we're doing transactions and modifying things, um, you know, so we're just kind of keeping light tabs on what's mm-hmm. going on in the budget. And then probably once or twice a month, we're having a little bit more of a discussion about, all right, what are kind of some of the bigger things we're trying to do this month? And uh, where does that go from there? And then those sometimes will lead to bigger conversations of, all right, do we need to make an adjustment to our budget? Mm-hmm. Uh, or again, like what are the bigger goals that we're trying to achieve? And, um, and one other thing that we do where this is a much bigger conversation for us, we take a month long sabbatical every year in which this, uh, has been really, really good for so many reasons for our business, for our marriage, for our spiritual life, for our finances, all this stuff. And during that time, that's when we do kind of do our, year-long planning. And so we'll Mm -hmm. talk about what our big goals financially are for the year, you know, and, um, and that's where we have a lot of those kind of deeper 10,000 foot view um, discussions. That's fantastic. I know so many families would love to have that option to get away. I know stay at home is not the same, but actually to get away and kind of not have to worry about work and some of those other day-to-day distractions. Yeah you know, and to really sit down and dig deep. But Bob, I know we could go into this like for hours and hours, but we only have a little bit for the podcast. If anyone is listening or watching right now and they want to learn more about you, I know you have several books, you got the videos, uh, podcast, correct? Yep. Well, yep. yep. Um, how can they find out? Where can they find you? Yeah. Uh, so seedtime.com, S-E-E-D-T-I-M-E.com. So yeah, so we have a podcast, Seed Time Money, and normally it's it's mm-hmm. Linda and I. So she's my other half. She's been really involved. So oftentimes we're having discussions where we're talking 
you know, kind of like this, where it's like, yeah. I'm the money nerd and she's a little more of the spender. And what does that look like in real life when we're kind of talking about all that? But we're on Instagram at seed time. So just come hang out and we'd love to say hi. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for joining us, guys. I'll have all the links in the show notes so you can find out more about Bob and Linda and what they're doing.